Okay, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we are going to be going over our diets and what we're about to be doing instead of what we've been doing. So for instance, um, I took my diet from 3,850 calories over the last 12 weeks all the way down to pretty much 2,300. Now I was at 2,500 uh, for the two previous weeks and then last week I actually dropped down to 2,300 calories. With the amount of cardio and weight training I'm doing, it was actually just too low of a deficit. It was just not enough calories. So last week's workout, uh, probably Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I really suffered and I was so exhausted and worn out. I couldn't even get in there Saturday to work out because I was just so tired from the lack of uh, calories. And at the end of the day, this isn't body shrinking. This is body building. I'm trying to build my body up. I'm trying to get as big as I can muscularly while losing as much body fat as possible while holding on to as much muscle mass. So at the end of this week, this will be six months that I've been on a very rigorous diet and going really, really, really hard on my diet, my cardio and everything else to go from 261 pounds. Well, I was actually between 261 and 264 all the way down to 223 pounds in the last six months. Now I took my weight down very slowly over the last six months. So I wouldn't lose that much muscle mass. Well, now I'm at a point that my weight is kind of stalling out and I know the leaner you get, the harder it gets for it to come off, but I'm not going to push myself to 2000 calories a day and have lousy workouts. And I'm not going to push myself to do an hour or two hours of cardio a day. I don't like doing that much cardio to begin with because I'm so worn out from it. I become less productive during the day and my workouts suffer. And then I don't like going that low on calories because again, my workouts suffer. And I like working out, I like lifting weights, and ultimately the most important thing to me is to have fun when I'm in the gym. If I'm dreading my workout because I'm exhausted and while I'm in there, I'm just completely miserable, it's just not worth it to me to keep pushing with that low of calories and that much cardio. So. What I actually did this week is this is the last week of the cut. So what I actually did this week is I went ahead and jumped the gun because I wasn't going to have another bad week of working out. I didn't do any cardio all weekend. This morning, I dropped my cardio from 20 minutes down to 10 minutes, and then I've picked my calories back up. So I was last week, I was at 2300, which was a mistake. So I went ahead and bumped my calories up by 500. So I'm actually at like 2750. So if you go off of the week before last, I was at 2500. So it's actually only 250 according to what I was at the previous week. Now, if you go off of last week, it's 500 calories, but that is just too much of a deficit for me and too much cardio. And I, like I said, at the end of the day, I want to have fun when I'm in the gym. I want to enjoy my workouts and I want to have a good time. My goal was to have a visible four pack or six pack at the end of this 12 weeks. It was a good swing, but it was still a miss, but I'm a lot closer now than I was 12 weeks ago and a lot closer than I was six months ago. So I'm gonna to continue to push for my abs until the end of the year, but I'm not gonna be going as hard on the diet and cardio. I'm backing off the cardio. I'm gonna be doing 10 minutes in the morning and two 10 minute walks during the day. Then I'm gonna be working out six days a week like I have been. I'm gonna be picking up the intensity and how hard I work out because I'm not gonna have that cardio for 20 minutes in the morning and I'm not gonna have that cardio in the evening. So I'll be able to push my workouts very, very hard while I'm in the gym which is what I enjoy doing while trying to lose some belly fat while still putting on muscle mass. And whether you can, it can be done or not, I don't care. I just enjoy working out. And if I don't put any muscle mass on and I just burn excess amount of fat, hey, that's a win. If I don't put any, if I don't burn any body fat, but I put some muscle mass on, hey, that's a win. Because at this point now, I think I'm gonna try to like main gain, like I'm gonna try to maintain my body fat while putting on muscle mass until March. And then from March, I'm going to see where I'm at and then find a show possibly from there and see if I can find a show maybe around September, October, and then get myself from March all the way till maybe September, October to compete. Now, this is subject to change, but this is where my mindset is right now and where I think I'm going to go. I think I'm going to start trying to put that muscle mass back on. So whenever I start to cut again in five months from now to do a legitimate cut, I'm going to be going into it with a mindset of like, okay, I'm leaner, I'm bigger, and I'm more ready this time around than I was last time. I don't have so much body fat to lose, and I'm in a better muscular position as far as it goes for being X amount of weeks out from the show. 
And if I don't come in on time for the show, who knows, maybe I'll still go through with it and just look fat and gross up on stage. And hey, someone has to take last place, right? <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll do well with it. Uh, I got a You've uh, you've always really tended to do well when it comes to having to like prepare for a competition. You kind of like you're you're very strict with it in general. But when you have something like that coming up, you're, you're like even more buttoned up and and on point with everything. So like, I got I think that's gonna work out for you. Well, um, real real quick. Also, what I want to say about my diet is this is what I'm doing for my actual diet. I am doing three pounds of meat a day, three pounds of ground meat a day spread out over the course of six mils. So I'm doing half a pound of ground meat per mil, uh, 93.7. And then I'm doing five ounces of rice measured cooked, which actually comes out to right at seven and a half ounces raw measured. If you measure it raw at seven and a half ounces, which slows up to roughly around like five ounces of rice per mil. And then I'm doing three ounces of beef stock in each mil. And that's where my calories are at right now. And that's what I'm doing for my meal. So that I do that six times a day for breakfast, second breakfast, <laughs> lunch, second lunch, first dinner, and second dinner, if you want to look at it like that. So that's that's my meal plan. And I do jasmine rice. I like jasmine rice over all the other rice. I like the flavor of it. So those of you who are wondering, like, what's your exact diet plan? That's my diet plan in all simplicity, as easy as it can possibly be. I do take a multivitamin. I take other supplements like potassium and vitamin D and fish oils and other stuff, I supplement from what I'm not getting through my diet. I do take pill form because it's easier for me to take a pill and get my other nutrients than having to add all that food on top of what I'm eating to get my macros. Yeah. So for me, like I started out at such a, a huge deficit, like going into this to like get to where I was cutting weight pretty much right from the start. So I haven't really changed much from the beginning till now on the diet. So I just continued to lose weight. But as we've talked about before in like previous videos and stuff, the many weeks of doing that plus actually coming down in the weight and everything, it has started to take a, a larger toll on like energy and stuff like that for me. So like listening, like talking with you today and everything like that, uh, going over it like for me I'm gonna cut out the cardio in the evening as well like I still do walks at work and stuff and not just like a 10 minute walk but just if I don't really have anything going on sort of thing I'll just kind of go outside and walk around to uh, somebody needs me for something at the moment so uh, like with that like I'll still have like some movements like that still in there and then diet wise I'm not going to really change anything just yet. I'm going to wait till after the deload week to kind of adjust there. But when the time comes to make the adjustments, I'll end up doing roughly not as much, but I'll I'll be increasing the the meals in in size and everything to a, like pick the calories up and it'll take me a while to get like a good rough estimate of where an actual maintenance level would be for me again. But in the process of doing that, it will bring back the energy levels and kind of all that stuff again. So it's going to take a little bit of time, but I'll get to where I have like a better baseline of like what my actual maintenance level with doing like the working out six days a week with the food and everything. So it uh, it's going to be interesting. See how it goes. Like I said, I'm just having the extra energy again will be nice because like at the start of this and even before that uh just from like the previous year cutting out the caffeine and everything like that uh I'd gotten to the point where I wasn't getting tired during the day anymore like the like from having like caffeine or like needing caffeine and stuff like that just throughout the day or just anything like that but I've noticed like as the weeks have kind of gone on even though it's only like a 20 to 25 minute break between the time I get home from work till I come over to the gym to work out uh, I'll sit down for like two minutes and I'll be like dozing off and it's more than likely just because I'm so much at a deficit that it's kind of affecting me in that way like uh, even with going to sleep on a more regular basis and everything and stuff and trying to like get that all lined out like I just I don't want to have that tired feeling during the day I don't like doing the the naps in the middle of the day if I don't absolutely need to kind of thing. Yeah, that that's from the accumulated fatigue, the reason why you're feeling like that. Like what you said, being on a big deficit, 
and then doing all the cardio, you've accumulated a lot of fatigue over the weeks and then you're doing so much output and your body's going to compensate it, right? So it's like if you do a lot of cardio, what's going to happen is you're going to burn a lot of cardio through, you're going to burn a lot of calories through cardio and then your body's going to adjust itself and make you want to do less movement throughout the day, which makes you less productive. So if you're on a huge deficit calorie wise, the only thing that your cardio is going to do is put you in a bigger deficit. So if you're moving around a lot at work and you're, you're burning a lot of calories by moving at work and then you go and you do cardio, you're just making a bigger deficit. So if you remove the cardio and you're more productive at work, you're still burning calories and that's a more productive way to burn your calories than it is by just staying, being on a Stairmaster and burning them off that way. Way more productive to be active at work than it is to step, get on the Stairmaster. Now, if you're eating a calorie surplus and you want to make sure you're getting enough food and you're trying to keep your heart healthy and you have the energy for it and you can do cardio and you can move at work and you are productive and you're having great workouts and absolutely keep pushing with the cardio. But like for me, I found you know, my, my cutoff point, And that was pretty much 2,500 calories was my cutoff where I had enough energy to be productive, do cardio and work out. But my workouts did start to suffer at 2,500. I started getting beat towards the end of the week and I started kind of sandbagging it towards the last like couple sets and everything at the end of the workout. And then when I went down to 2,300, um, I hit a wall, I hit a hard wall and I just lost my mental focus, my mental drive, everything about it just did not I didn't have anything in me left to push forward besides willpower, right? All my motivation was gone, 100% gone. I had no motivation, but that's when the willpower came in. And that's where I knew I wanted this, regardless if I felt like I didn't want it right then and there. I knew at the end of the day I did. So I still ate my food. I still did my cardio. I still got in the gym, did what I needed to do. But at the end of the day, I knew, hey, this is getting to the point where my body's starting to shut my shut me down. Like my body's starting to tell me, like, I don't care. We're shutting down whether you want to or not. So that's when I made the conscious decision, like, okay, I jumped calories a little too soon on that last week and I, I shouldn't have done that. So now I'm at the point where I'm going to try to kind of like reposition myself. And I hate using the phrase main gaining. I, I really hate that phrase, but for lack of a better term, like I said, really what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try not to go over to get out of the two twenties. I'm going to stay at like, I'm going to try to stay below two thirty, or at least in the low two thirties over the course of the next five months and not go up into the mid or high 30s. So that way when the time comes in March, April, and I'm ready to start looking for a competition to cut, instead of starting off at 260, I'll be starting off around 230 or 228 or 227 or 229. And if I have to cut 15 pounds, if I could find a show out 15 weeks, that's a pound a week, right? And then, so that that's my mindset right now is I'm gonna try to keep my body fat as low as possible by putting on as much muscle mass as possible by any means necessary, whatever it takes to put on as much muscle mass as I can in those five months, I'm going to do everything I can to put on as much. And then I'm, I might even go as far whenever I get closer to deciding where I want to, like when I want to compete, finding a coach or a trainer. I don't know if I'm going to go with an online coach just to kind of help me with like my nutrition and help me with like my, uh, my last couple weeks is the last like three to four weeks is very crucial when it comes to competing. Like you have to get dialed in with your water, your salt, your hydration, your carb retention, cutting carbs out, introducing them back in. Like all that is super critical. And even if you get a trainer, it doesn't mean that your trainer is going to know your body on that first show. But after you compete that first time, he's going to understand your body more. You're going to understand your body more. And the next show, you'll be able to dial in better. Then the next one, you'll be able to dial in better and better and better if you keep with the same coach, at least if he's a good coach, that is. And I we live in Houston, so there's Alpha Land. Alpha Land is like an hour from me, 45 minutes to an hour. And there's a lot of good coaches there. And that's that's a really popular gym in Houston for a lot of big-time bodybuilders. But also, too, like I said, there's a lot of good online coaches that I don't want to like you know pass over. It just comes down to convenience, price, and then if their values line up with my values for what I'm going for, you know. So it, that's if I decide to go with a coach because when you get that hungry and you get that tired, it doesn't matter how good you are and how much you know and how dedicated you are, your mind will mess with you in such a negative way. You're going to want to stop dieting, stop doing cardio. You're going to start questioning yourself. Am I cutting too much? Am I not doing enough? Am I doing too much? Do I need to cut out now? Do I need to pull out now? Is this what I need to do? do I, and you start questioning it. So someone on the outside looking in, watching what you're doing and listening to you and seeing your body, they make better rational decisions because they're not hungry. They're not starving. They're not tired. They're not fatigued. So they can look at you and be like, no, 
Ignore every impulse you have and just stick to this because this is where we're going and they can help keep you on the trend because sometimes it's just good to shut your brain off and just listen to a coach and do as they say, right? It's like if anyone's ever gone through a bad breakup, this is the best analogy that I could put it. When you're with them and you're miserable and you're fighting all the time, all you want is out. And then you get out of that relationship and then when you're out and you're lonely, the only thing that you could think of is all the good times, the happy times, the wonderful times, the times you laughed and cut up and all the romantic times. And you can't think of a single horrible thing about that person that made you leave them. And then when you see them and you start talking to them again, everything reminds you about why you left this person. Well, that's the same thing for dieting, right? It, it messes with your mind. Whatever you think you know, you don't know when you're in it. And then when you're in it, you can't see it because you're too deep in the middle of it. So having a coach is a good way to, to kind of ignore your intrusive thoughts and be able to just listen to someone else from the outside and be like, okay, I'm going to trust your judgment and just move forward. And even if you don't hit the money and you don't hit it on the mark, you at least like know yourself better and your coach will know yourself better for your next show and everything. So... But I think that's going to be it for me on this one. Um, is there anything else you want to add? I'm good for tonight. All right. Well, hey, guys, we appreciate you stopping by, checking us out and watching. If you made it this far in the video, if you want to go ahead and leave a like, we'd appreciate it. If you've been watching and you want to and you haven't subscribed to the channel, but if you would subscribe to the channel, we would much appreciate that. And if you don't want to subscribe and you don't want to like the video, it's as simple as don't do it. But we will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Yep. Catch you later.